I'm going to do an exercise for American Mahjong using the National Mahjong League card. This exercise is called Charleston Force. We're going to force hands by pre-selecting categories from the card. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We've got our work cut out for us. Singles and pairs and quints and like numbers. We're going to do three iterations. One for each category. I'm going to act as the dealer, so we'll get 14 tiles, then we'll be non-dealer, 13 tiles, and then back to dealer. And I'll create a mock Charleston with no jokers for each one. We have a flower three five seven eight in dots, two six five nine in bands, put that in order, three six seven nine in cracks and a red dragon. If these were your tiles, which of these would you force and what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I'd force a single and pair hand because we have no jokers. So we have potential for either 369 or 2468. More likely 369 because we have no fours, but that's where I would start. So I would discard those, keep these, either 369 or 2468. We can keep this if we get evens. So what pass? One of each suit. Maybe put a dragon in there because these are all big odds. Okay, here we go. Oh my goodness, we got fours. Pair of fours. So two, four, six, eight, it is. We're going to build around the multiple there. Keep the six. Okay, let's pass one of each suit. Let's do three, seven, nine. Actually, let's switch out the three. Well, either way, we've got three, nine, three, nine. I, maybe it's better to have a mixed suit, but then we have three, five. I think maybe this might be better. So let's pass these three. Nines. Oh my goodness. Okay. We're going to keep the six and we're going to break out these nines. We got a six and a two. We're just going to keep gathering till we have no discards. There's a two. Oh, here's the eight. Okay, so here we have two, four, six. We have sixes. The pair hand is pairs of two, four, six, eight in one suit with two pairs in like numbers. So we could maybe improve this a little bit. Whoops by passing, let's see, we just passed a nine, I think. So let's give a nine to a different player and pass these three. We really need an eight bam. Oh, we got a flower. We needed that too. Okay, so now we have a two again. So let's break up that seven and pass these three. 
a crack. Two, four. So we have two, four. Well, let's put it in order here. Two, four, six, gap eight. Six, eight, two, four, six. I know there's an eight dot in there, I think. Was there an eight dot in there? I don't remember now. I think we should keep the sixes still. Two, four, six, eight. Okay. Either way, this is going to be risky. Two, four, eight, or seven, eight. Let's say seven, eight, two. We'll just do that. Okay, so no keepers, but we have a potential pair hand. We do have a gap, no eight bam. So it's gonna be risky. I would do a plan B. Plan B, maybe the first two, four, six, eight hand. Even still, we have that gap, which is a pair for that hand. So this is gonna be a bit risky, but we're forcing a hand. And sometimes this is what it looks like. I still think this was a good Charleston because we have only four discards and just one gap albeit an important critical gap, but it's still doable. If you would have done something differently, write it in the comment section below with pull one. Oh, I forgot to get the, that was like uh, singles and pairs. We have a pair of flowers. Wait, this is these are jokers. This is a flower. West south. One seven two or one seven in bams, two four nine in dots, two four seven in cracks. If these were your tiles, which of those would you force? And what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I think I would force like numbers with news with either twos, fours, or sevens. And we'd have to decide right now because we have two sevens, two twos, and two fours. We could maybe push a quint because we have jokers, but there are no multiples. I would rather force a quint with multiples to start with. So let's go with like numbers. The one and nine can go. So now this is when this theory of outside in comes in. Numbers on the edge are not as efficient. So they may be passed in the Charleston. Tiles four, five, six in the middle are more flexible, especially with, you know, of course, consecutive run, which is the easiest category on the card. So we may not see fours. So with that logic, let's pass a four crack and see what happens. And then next time we can pass the four dot. And here we have potential with either sevens or twos. And we'll just go with whichever one builds up. So let's pass these three. We got a seven. We did get a four, but we gave it up already. So we'll keep that seven. Let's keep sevens and let the twos go. So let's pass one of each suit. We got Souths, okay. 
Now I would consider switching to a quint because we have a multiple now and a pung of six of souths. So I would switch and go to quints now. So let's pass these three. No keepers. Let's pass these three. No keepers. Look at the twos. We'll pass one of each suit. No keepers. Dragons. We'll pass these three. Actually, we could probably make that a little better by maybe doing that. Oh, a seven dot. I think we should keep it. We'll see. Okay, now we need optional cross. Let's pass these. Seven dot. Now we have an option. I think that was a great Charleston for quince. We could quint this already. And we can Kong the seven. All we need to do is build up the flowers, and there are eight of them. It's still going to take some work, but I think that was a good Charleston for a quint. Once that multiple built up, and then, of course, with the pair, that's what triggered it for me. If you would have done something different, write it in the comment section below. And this is pull two. We have a joker, a flower, a west, red green dragon, four six in bams, one four five six seven nine in cracks, and a pair of fives. We're playing like numbers, so let's build around the five. Five. Now, I think that's pretty bleak, a, bl a bleak start, so I think I would keep the fours and the sixes. And if either of these pair up, I'd ditch the fives. Now, that is risky. I would let the wind go. There's a news hand, news with like numbers. Since we have a flower, let's keep the west and give up a dragon instead. So we can maybe build news with like numbers because we have that flower. So let's pass these three. We picked up a six. So now that's going to be a little easier because we have representation for both sixes. So let's just stick with it and see how this develops. We've got tiles to pass here. Sevens. Oh my goodness. Well, it is a pair, but we don't have any like number potential, so I'll break it up. Flower. We needed that. We've got to pass. Oh wait! We need that east. We're going to keep that. And then we're going to keep the sixes. Break up the fours. We'll maybe keep the fives for a little bit. So let's pass one of each suit. We got a west and like numbers with eights. But we have sixes and five. Maybe what we could do here is let go of the five and keep the eights because we could pair up one of the eights. I think it's kind of six half, one half dozen the other really. So 
maybe we should just stick with the five. Although, remember that strategy I mentioned before about outside in and inside out? This is an edge tile. Let's just test the theory. Well, I have random tiles here. People are going to act differently, of course, because they have their own style of play and personality. These are random tiles, so it may not be provable here, but let's just, let's just see what happens. We got an eight. So now we could do either eights or sixes. We also got a north. So we have a choice. We can either pass, we're on last right, so we can actually pass blind here and still keep our options open, or we can pass fully and break one of these up. If we use that concept of inside out, outside in, the outside, the edge tiles might be easier to build during the Charleston because the middle tiles are very flexible. They may be used. The other thing about sixes in particular is they're in two, four, six, eight consecutive run and three, six, nine, three different categories. So let's pass fully and give up a six and we'll play news with eights. We got a five and a two, three. Okay, this will be great because we can pass one of each suit for optional cross. So let's do, oh, we can't do one of each suit. I don't like to pass like numbers. That's almost as bad as passing a pair, I think. So let's do two, five, six. No keepers. Lots of fives and sevens were coming around and we did get a west. Another thing we could consider is keeping the west for a potential switch to east and west with eights. So I'd probably keep that. And we have four discards with an option. And no gaps, incidentally. We just need a single south in there and build up our multiples. So that was like numbers. Charleston Force is a great exercise for three reasons. First, if you ever attend a special event like a fundraiser or a tournament, the host will typically pick a category from the card and the player who wins a hand in that category will win a prize. The second reason is to dot your card with winning hands and play every hand on the card in the given year. If you have lots of dots on your card and you see a gap, you can force a hand to try to complete that hand and fill your card. The third reason is because it's fun. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click that little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.